want to talk about a Thursday night game. Ohio State 45, Minnesota 31. We just brought up Ohio State. They have got flaws all over the place. But, as I mentioned before with Penn State and Wisconsin, if you have those explosive playmakers, those guys that can break a game open on one play where if you miss a single tackle, you miss anything, you can absolutely break the game wide open. And that's exactly what Ohio State did. C.J. Stroud was not great. He looked ruffled in the first half. He looked completely uncomfortable. And you got somebody like Travion Henderson that can break one for 80 yards. Yeah, it's going to change the way you feel about the game. Did you? How did you feel about Minnesota in this spot? Well, I didn't think Minnesota was very good. I still don't think Minnesota is very good. It, 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 it's, it's one of the reasons I think Ohio State is – is is definitely able to get got this year, and yeah. and maybe maybe a couple of times, uh, because because there's a there's a world where Minnesota, kind of one of the bottom two bottom three teams in the in the East. Yeah, there's there's certainly that, well, especially now, right? Because you know you lose Mo Ibrahim, and it, yeah, I mean he, he's their he's their guy, he's their playmaker. That, that that was their entire offense. Yes, and now I will say this: they were shockingly. What's the word I'm looking for? They they were capable, right? They were capable when he went out because they had to try some different things, and and a lot of it worked. But you know, as far as you know, successful plays and all this, you know, EPA in this game. So EPA per play in this game was actually not too terribly one sided. Ohio State point four five per play and Minnesota point five per play. There is a difference there, obviously. Ohio State won by 14, but, you know, this was not, like, a demolition by Ohio State. Minnesota was able to keep in it, and and I thought that Ohio State was just going to run away with this thing, and they never were quite able to. But I, I do think, you know, Reif uh, jumps in, Chris Autumn Bell out of the game, Ibrahim went down late, many had OSU on the ropes. Yeah, they did. But part of me is trying to figure out, like, Ohio State was replacing so many guys. Was it... Was it part of that that was this issue because Minnesota had so many returning guys back? But Ohio State, even as talented as they are because they're supposed to be so far ahead of everybody else in the Big Ten, they didn't look completely ahead of everybody else. Um, I didn't think so. Okay. I think this quarterback's going to make some mistakes. Yes. Like, I thought there was a world where they were going to pull him if they got down any further. And he wasn't able to make some plays. And he made a couple of big plays. He got him out of the hole. But, I mean, he was part of the problem that got him in the hole. Yes. Yes, he he certainly was. C.J. Stroud in this game. Let's see. Let's look at his EPA per play. 0. .56. That's that's not great for a quarterback. Yards per play was 3.14 for him. Tanner Morgan. Well, especially considering the, the wide receiving core that he's throwing to. Everybody yes. unanimously agrees it's the best in the country and and you're mediocre against not a good defense. I, that's not listen. Could be first game jitters. Could be one of those situations where that'll be the worst he looks all year. That's fine. I need to see him look better than that before I just start chalking them up and throwing them in the playoff because they're Ohio State. Yeah, he did end up with four touchdowns, one interception in this spot. But yeah, his his EPA for the game twelve point three nine. That's not bad. And and Tanner Morgan was ten point nine nine. So that should tell you exactly how close those two stat lines really were at the end of the day. Tanner didn't get as many as many touchdowns, but but they I mean these were this was a close matchup. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.